Well, first of all, congratulations. I think there's been some cool news this week, right? Uh, some of the early accolades of the season are beginning to come in, and you guys are being recognized. I believe the uh, first one was the Critics' Choice Documentary Award nomination, Best Documentary. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I thought maybe just to establish, because I, I always found this interesting when I was learning about uh, you guys and the origins of this film. How much background just amongst the two of you is there in uh, deep water diving? How did you come to this topic? Uh, there's precisely zero, zero background in my life. <laughs> I'm a failed snorkeler. <laughs> um, I'm actually a pretty decent snorkeler. Um, uh, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And can we talk about just in terms of, you know, for both of you, your past work, uh, is there anything that would have suggested to you guys or to anyone else that this is, uh, you know, something that you would have been heading towards, or, or just tell us how it how it entered the picture for you? Or? Um, well, I suppose I um, I read about Stephen's accident in, in the Irish press, um, and um, it was uh, I have an interest in the sea, and it was one of those times where you kind of pull out a thread and you start chatting to people and then all of this started to reveal itself um, and and we had worked domestically in Ireland before but we knew it had the potential for, for a far greater audience and and John seemed to be like the person that both myself and Jamie who's our Irish producer really looked up to and had done for years and John just felt like the right person to bring it to um, and and I believe you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and from my perspective, you know, Scott, the truth is, was it am I, was it sort of destined? I don't know. But 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 but, you know, what what I'm always looking for is great stories. And when Laura and Jamie came through the door, it was clearly a great story. And so, so, um, you know, that is what I initially and my team initially connected with. And that's. You know, and, and just also the sense that Jamie and Anne and Laura were sort of were were incredibly open and and collaborative and wanting, you know, the kind of guidance that we could give because we have the 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 sort of you know the years experience behind us. Um, so that was that's what made me want to do. And curiously, you know, I just made the in the couple of years before I'd made a film called The Rescue, which was also lots of underwater stuff. Mm -hmm. And having never been anywhere near water with subjects of my films, so sort of back to back, we did two films that had that sort of recurring theme. In terms of this particular, um, you know, form of sport, was there has there been um, documentary footage films uh, beyond the, foot, the filming of the actual contest? But has anybody ever really done a deep dive like this into into the sport? There's been. A uh, in terms of documentaries, there's a film, I can't remember what it's called, it's about Audrey Mester, who was a um, No Limits freediver. Um, but it was very much about her specific case. Um, and and it, well, I can't remember what year it was, but it feels like things have changed an awful lot since then. And there there hadn't been maybe something that had the, a film that had the opportunity to kind of like build this world in the way that we did. Um, that that I knew of anyway. And I, I knew, sorry, I knew nothing about the world, nothing no. at all. But then, having said that, just the words free diving for me as a sort of filmmaker and a storyteller, you just immediately think, okay, that sounds dramatic, that's for sure. And yeah. so, 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 you know, that was exciting from the get go. By the way, the minute I finished asking that question, I'm mortified. I said, has anyone done a deep dive into? The there was not not intentional. Um, so. For this to work, you guys were going to need, I imagine, some some major access to archival footage, and then the participation of some key individuals. Was there ever any doubt that those ingredients were available to you, or was it a challenge to get people to talk to you who you wanted to? It was never guaranteed that we'd have all the ingredients. It was fairly clear what we needed from quite early on, and there was a, a kind of a, a checklist of things that had to kind of come together. And it really wasn't until we got the last thing that we knew we were going to get the last. Thing. You know, it, and that's kind of the way it always is. Um, it's a process, and you just have to hold tight, and you've no idea, but you have to just hope that it it will work out. Yeah. 
And it's a strange thing, actually, because as Laura's answering that question and thinking about that question, for, for no rational reason, I've often been in this place, and I've, because, uh, yeah, many of our films are very archive driven, and you don't know at the beginning that you're going to find it, but I've always just had this sense we're going to find it. And we've yet to make a film where we suddenly think, God, we really don't have the archive yeah. we need to make this film. And we truly didn't know there was a vast amount out there that we really needed to tell the story. But I just had this instinctive feeling that we were going to find it. And sure enough, we did. Now, in terms of presenting what, what you had, um, this idea of showing the kind of dual tracks, was that clear to you from the beginning this was the way to do it? Or was, there, uh, was that sort of found in the editing room? essentially it was very much the plan from the beginning i think once um we found that it was very early on as well it was my first meeting with peter that he gave me a pen drive that had all of steven's audio on it and and it was from that moment that i i thought right we can do something really special we could potentially tell steven's story in the moment and and what i wanted to do was treat alessia and steven in the same way kind of grammatically in the film so that we could be in the moment so that the audience weren't skipping ahead knowing things that s the people on the screen in that moment didn't know um and, and I, I for me i felt like that was a kind of unique opportunity to to approach the story like this with with this piece of you know material of from Stephen that we'd never be able to you know if it didn't exist it didn't exist so it was it was a real opportunity to uh, as well for, to hear Stephen tell his own story totally um and then in terms of the I think you found a very artful way to fill in the few blanks that were always going to be inherently there in this story um similarly with the rescue there are certain things that I don't you know more blanks yeah. yeah you can't do it so how do you how do you fill that in um can you share just logistically how those things were um kind of uh captured and then integrated yeah um so really the gaps were few and far between we we couldn't believe it like we'd hear these incredible stories and we'd say like God, does, does it exist? Did somebody delete the hard drive? You know, because that happens as well. It could be filmed and somebody says, oh, I needed a bit of space, so I deleted that. And you're like, <laughs> Christ. And that did happen a couple of times. Um, but, but, but more often than not, it, it really didn't. And it was, it was, it was there. And sometimes there'd be a moment within a scene where I think, oh God, they, didn't, they just didn't get that piece, which is kind of integral, especially when... Stephen is saving Alexei Molchanov in his uh, 128 meter uh, record attempt, and there is never a shot. There, the people do, didn't really film the safety divers. It was all about the diver, um, and so there wasn't a shot of Stephen waiting, and that was just such an important piece to punctuate and to see and to feel that time pass as he's there waiting seeing nothing um and so uh we wanted to film that and, and to get the depth we couldn't we couldn't see we weren't allowed to see the the, the top the surface of the water but it, we also didn't want to see the bottom of the water but we wanted this big wide shot so it was about finding the right depth in 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 this caribbean sea in mexico um so it was it was an amazing adventure for us to to go into these scenarios to make you know to finish this film, yeah. Uh, I'm pleased. What well, I was going to say, as Laura says, we didn't know on the at the outset how much of that kind of shooting we were going to need to do, and happily, but by the time we came to do the shoot, it was it was really re very minimal. So so it, it was quite, although they were they were sort of adv quite tricky shots to do. There weren't that many of them, so we we could manage it fairly easily. I think one of the most artful things you guys um, kind of the icing on the cake here was with the sound design because yeah. we could, for, right? I mean, they're, they're, the, this could have um, been a, a glaring, you know, I guess I don't want to say it would have been a glaring absence, but we, it adds so much to the sense of what, what, we're, what we're showing here. So um, just how did you, who do, we, who do we thank for that and how is that done? Yeah. Just before you answer, so I, I would say very definitely we have Laura to thank and Julian, our editor, to thank because sound design is very definitely not one of my strong suits. So I'm sure I probably would have been kind of sniffy about the whole concept of it. But actually, you were very clear from the get-go that it was a vital part of the, which obviously it is with, all, with everything set underwater. But you and Julian were, were, were wholeheartedly driving that part of the film, so you can... 
Yeah, and, and very much Julian was a brilliant um, introduction to like the the layers of sound design that you can really bring to to a project like this. And uh, I, I we started with the with the opening dive, and it was just we met with the with the guys in Molinaire and we were saying like we have to create this nobody knows what it sounds like and and free divers have described it to us but we now have it's it's so we kind of had total creative license to create build this sound of what does it feel like and the journey you know it's not just you go to a place you hear the atmosphere you're you're journeying to it and so it's like what does 100 meters of water above your head sound like um, and that was just another really amazing kind of part of the filmmaking. And, and we had Foley and we had like every kind of track lay in there. It was just insane. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Um, so this film dropped uh, not that long ago. And um, I imagine that prior to that, uh, Leslie had probably seen it, but not many other, not many other members of this uh, community that are a part of this. I guess just... For, for can you share what the reaction to it was for her and the people in the community? But also when you put something out on Netflix, it's everywhere but like North Korea in a in a day. Uh, what kind of feed? What's that like for a filmmaker? Um, yeah, I am up to a point. So 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 well, I'm not well. I, yes, I am. Laura and I and my our fellow producer Sarah Thompson, we went to Rome to show what was effectively a fine, fine cut, wasn't it, to Alessia, her father, and her current boyfriend, which was, you know, it's one of, to my mind, it's one of the sort of extraordinary and amazing things about making documentaries when you go through an experience of, like that, where you're going to the real people to show them the film of their life and everything that's entailed in it and the emotions of it all. It's a really extraordinary thing to do. And uh, it was extraordinary, wasn't it? it? Was It was incredibly powerful, incredibly moving. We were, of course, really trepidatious, although Alessia had been amazing through the process and incredibly collaborative and given of her time, but at the same time was really anxious about how this was going to go down, as you can imagine, having seen the film with her amazing father. And uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. They watched it and they were profoundly moved and it's again one of the beautiful things about doing what we do you know I made a film years ago about Pat Tillman called The Tillman Story which is a very emotional story this is a very emotional story and when you make those films and you show it and then they turn to you and effectively say I can't thank you enough for what you've done it's a beautiful experience it transcends the idea that it's work of any sort it's about it's about it's a life experience that profoundly changes change the way and changes the way I live my life which it's such a blessing to get from one's work. So certainly that experience of showing it to Alessia and her dad was amazing. And then you're right, when it went on the service, we we knew that all sorts of people can, I mean, obviously we'd showed it to the key people, Peter's, um, Stephen's father, who again was totally knocked out and, and thankful to us, which is again, a really beautiful thing. But actually the diving community reacted incredibly positively. And I think we were a little trepidatious because you know, it's their world and we aren't from their world. So I think we were always slightly worried that they might be, they might be critical of certain aspects, but they weren't. And all the people in the film have now seen it and have championed it. And some of them come to screenings like this and talk in support of it, which is fantastic. Um, and I mean, yeah, I, I, I have been through this experience many times. I wonder for you yeah, how that whole experience has felt. Yeah, well, it was weird. You know, you, you don't expect kind of... Um, Everybody, you know, I think everybody that I've ever met has reached out to That's me good. to say that they saw it, um, which was amazing. Um, but really for the people, the fact that the people in the film, are, you know, all you want is for them, I suppose, not to regret taking part in the project, you know, and, and to be proud of it and to, to be glad that they did it. And that for me was the, like I, I know it might sound terrible, but it was the most important thing because you're making a film you, you, and, and sometimes you're making choices and you because this is it you want it to be fair and you want it to be true and sometimes that's hard to to watch and to kind of face um and I suppose it was just the fact that everybody was happy with it was yeah it, it meant the world to me so then the fact that the whole the rest of the world saw it that was just a, a massive bonus yeah. and also just finally that all those people said that and this is the most important thing of all that it was true to Stephen and that 
you know, Stephen would have been proud of it and his father was deeply proud of it. I mean, that's why you set out to do these things to make, to, to make, to, to elicit that kind of response from the people whose lives story you're telling. Please. One of the things actually that meant an awful lot to me, which I had seen in other films and people say, oh, it had a cathartic effect. And I always thought, God, I, I hope that I can make something someday that the people in it really get something back from it. Um, and Alessia, um, after she saw it in, with us in Rome that day, she said, can you get me like a link or a DVD or something of it so that I can show a couple of people that are in my life, right? You know, the coaches and people are important to her so that they could understand what she had gone through. And for me, I was just like, thank God, there's a u she, this is useful for her. Right. It's a way where she doesn't have to sit down and explain that this is just something that she can show to people and that they get it. One last thing for me, and then we're going to go to the audience, so start thinking of what you'd like to ask. Um, but I know there have been many developments for Alessia, uh, particularly, well, certainly in the water since even this film ended, which I thought she had kind of pushed the limit as far as it could go then. As it turns out, would you update us? That's what I love. She's added 19 meters to her world record, so she's now at 123 meters. Wow. Um, so if you were in any doubt about <laughs> right. the 104, yeah. Right, she's right. She's blown that out of the water. Amazing. Well, uh, let's go to you guys who... It's a little hard to see, but I see in the back left there's somebody. Yep. Just give me one second. Just one sec. We'll bring the microphone. Thank you for a very moving, touching documentary. Um, it, it really was um, incredible. As somebody who tried for a world record in my sport, I felt the effort. You brought it through the struggle to do such uh, a feat. A uh, couple of questions. How big is this free diving community? And I noticed in the credits you had Czech Republic, Mexico. I assume the music probably was from, you know, an orchestra in the Czech, but what, what, what are all the different locations and how long did it take you to go to them and do what you had to do? Um, so all the music was recorded in the UK, Nanita Desai uh, recorded there. The Czech Republic was that we filmed with Christina um, in Czech Republic and we filmed in Mexico a lot of our um, like recon we did in the sea there or in the cenote, that last shot that you see at the end where Alessia is swimming up, that's in, a, in the middle of the jungle in Mexico. Um, and we filmed in the Bahamas. Um, at Vertical Blue in Egypt. Um, so we did that. Um, it was incredible that it was that our team was able to make it happen in 2021 and 2022, mainly 2021. Um, so there was a lot of passenger locator forms and things like that <laughs> and COVID tests that we had to do. But um, yeah, it, it worked out. Yeah, so we basically just went wherever our contributors were and, you know, where, where they were grouped so that we could capture as many of them in one go as possible. Yeah, there were 60, uh, there were 16 contributors and they were from 10 different countries. So it was, we did have to wait, wait quite a while until, right, there's a competition here, there's four of them gonna be here, let's go in there and, and do it as efficiently as possible. Because with all the quarantines as well, she'd be quarantined for half a year if you were to, yeah. And how big is the free diving community? Oh yeah, um, God, like th there's, there's about like, 20 or 30 massive uh, competitions um, all around the world. It's a growing sport. It's it's really hard to put a number on. Um, there's only a really small amount of people at the very, very top who are kind of able to um, make a living from it. And an awful lot of people would uh, compete, but they'd also teach. Um, and that would be the majority of them. And then you have the very few uh, really elite, like Alessia and Will, at the very top. And then um, you've got r recreational freedivers. Um, and that's like, you know, uh, they, they could, there could be any number of those. But it's a growing sport, yeah. Have you guys tried to see how far you can, you can do it? John is nearly at it. Actually. You can't freedive in the bath, so unfortunately <laughs> I, I haven't. <laughs> Gone to three meters hey. at Vertical Blue. I admire you for trying. And then uh, we got one right here. Yeah, wherever the microphone is. Yeah. 
Well, congratulations to the whole production team. What a what an amazing film. Um, I was keen to understand if the decision to film in the cenotes over potentially returning to Dahab to do any recon was a conscious one, or if it was based on production considerations and lighting, depth, that type of thing. It was it was based on safety actually, because we did return to Dahab. We filmed a little bit on the surface and and just below the surface there, but of course the arch is at fifty two meters. Um, so it just wouldn't have been safe for us to go back there. So we had to find a roof, basically, uh, that was um, sh- uh, like that was dark enough, but also was shallow enough, and there was space to swim in. Um, and we we were looking for that roof anywhere in the world, and, and it was in uh, Maravilla Cenote in Mexico that we found it, and that was able to, we were able to replicate. Um, the roof above Alessia's head. So it was really, like, it was just really important to us that the safety of our crew and our divers was was there. Yeah, wow. the main thing. I need to see there's some some folks up here. And Mike's coming, just one sec. I'll come to you now. Oh, Hi. Um, I also, sorry, I also have two questions. The first is a simple one, and it's just, uh, how did you acquire that because you didn't make the decision to get involved, you said, until after you heard of, of Steve's death. So how did you get that extraordinary wealth of material about the uh, 2017 Blue Vertical uh, competition? And my other question uh, is, presumably uh, in those competitions, there's that camera that's mounted under the bottom platform where they grab the, the piece of canvas. So presumably you had footage of Alessia grabbing hers. Since the documentary, did you have any qualms about I don't want to say artificially, but creating that very tense scene by not showing the footage of her grabbing the thing. So that footage isn't beamed anywhere. So it's been recorded down there, but nobody can see it. So the people on the surface didn't know that she had been down there and that she'd taken the tag. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah so in every other dive, you, you show it. We show it, yeah. So you decided not to. Yeah, and that was in order to tell the story of the people on the surface uh, who didn't know it. Yeah. What was the other? Oh, the extraordinary amount of footage in 2017. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so there was, like, at all of the competitions, there's always a documentary crew who would be brought along to document it. They also have their own cameras as well. So there was a documentary crew there who were following Alessia and also happened to do an interview with Stephen as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and hap- happened to capture it. But all, the whole film really is made up of different, we've over 100 providers of different filmmakers from all over the world over the course of about 20 years that decided to film specific events. And we have one more, just last one. Last question, yeah. So um, I was reading film reviews before I came here and I saw a lot of people compare this film to Free Solo, which mm-hmm. is about a rock climber. Uh, and I, I haven't seen the film myself, but I know the ending that nobody died, <laughs> I think, from that film. Uh, how do you feel about the comparison? And also, there was another film that came out this year called The Mission, and it was not about another extreme sport, but it was some, you know, a guy pursuing his uh, religious belief and died on that mission. Um, so my question is, how do you s- feel about these comparisons, and what are the films that you maybe used during the process as inspiration or reference when making this film? Uh, I, yeah, people compare things. That's, you know, their own I mean, business. Who doesn't want to be compared to a film that won the Academy Award? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. So it was a beautiful, brilliant film, and the more people mention it in the same breath, the happier I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an amazing film. Um, and it was, it, uh, at the time, when I watched it, I think it was 2018, um, that it won the Oscar, so probably yeah. 2017. Yeah, an amazing film. Um, and I suppose like pushing, pushing the boundary, and, and also like, you know, climbing without the ropes, you know, free diving without it. There's a, there's a kind of simplicity to the two things that is quite beautiful. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, oh, about inspiration, reference, other films. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Are there other, do- other docs that inspired you to make this um there's another film about climbing actually that i really enjoyed it had a lot of archive in it um it's on netflix (laughs) (laughs) it's got it's got the free solo guy in it um no 
13 peaks. Pe- 14 peaks. No, the other one. The Alchemist? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for this, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Scott. Thanks, everyone.